uppercut, uppercut, sonic boom. Let's rip straight in, boys and girls. We're going to talk about making quick reads. We're going to be talking about making you a better tanker. We're going to be talking about how you can improve your gameplay and maybe just focus on being good at these particular skills and not get so frustrated about losing games you feel like you should be doing well in because you can't do anything about the other bloke with his thumbs or you know rolling his face across the screen i sometimes think all you can do is control what you're doing now the first thing we want to talk about is making quick reads and trying to make trades that are always positive this is so evident when you start playing the game in mediums um you're going to see there is a ho re there there is a standard b i have isolated the standard b uh by pulling away from the ho re and then vroom, in comes the 215b we go for a tracking shot don't quite get it, but he decides to kill the 57. And then I'm moving back, getting another track. And see how I'm keeping this tank. Now, the natural tendency here is to run. But running isn't going to get you far enough away to be successful. So I actually just go back to this busted-ass tank here and force the Ho-Ri into a turn fight. Now, this is what I'm talking about by making quick reads and making good trades. Sometimes the safest place for you to be is literally right next to the tank in front of you. Uh... Even though it's a red and it's got a huge big ass gun and you're terrified of it, you've got to be able to make a quick read on a situation and decide the safest place for me to be is where this tank cannot hit me. And that may well be right next to it. So that's why we side hug. That's why we circle of death around things. Talking about situational awareness, it's so important. It's so key. Look at this guy. He's in a 268. I mean, he's in spawn. And he's basically covering absolutely no one. And I'm looking back there and I'm like, he's moved. He's moved to that position intentionally. And I don't like that because that's what we call a failure position. Let me explain that. It's it's a position where the only way that he will get shot is if this entire flank fails. And as a TD, when you're in that kind of a, a situation, it means you're going to be spotting your own targets. So if you're a TD and you're spotting your own targets and you're not behind a bush and you don't have a lot of time to pull back and use camo, then the first shot you take is the shot that will get you spotted and you'll immediately get killed. So he's in what we call a position that is, it's relying on failure by the rest of the team. And I can't extend out and hold because he is so far back that anyone I spot out here, he's not going to be able to hit. And anyone that pushes me, he's not going to be able to help with. These are the kinds of reads and situations that are horrible in World of Tanks Blitz. Because you will know, once you get good at this, you will see me on stream or Meadsy or Fatness or anyone. They'll get good. They'll just look at it and go, oh, we're screwed. And they'll know because of the way the team's distributed and deployed around the map that this isn't going to work. You've got to be able to make quick reads on what's going on around you and actually change because of it. You can see here... This guy kept bouncing me and pushing me off. I was trying to get through. And then I look at the minimap, and even in my anger and fury, I see that their whole team is spotted. There's someone in C. That means the entire team, C plus six is seven, and we've got one medium tank and a light sniping. We need to get back around to this flank. We need to do it very, very quickly. Now, this is why map, map awareness is key. You count the tanks on the map. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, one's in C. That's a full team. There is no one on the right flank to fight. We've got to get back here because that medium is going to get absolutely walloped, as he did. And we need to start putting some shots in here. So we get to a hull down position. And we actually hold here very, very strongly. And we're going to also talk about... This is a tank to the, the M46 pattern. I don't understand why this tank doesn't have more love. Uh, it's got a very strong turret for a medium tank. It's got decent mobility. It's got eight degrees of gun depression, and it's got a 350 alpha gun. You can do a lot of good things with this tank, and it's one of the least watched reviews I have. People just don't find it sexy at all. It really doesn't get the same kind of love as these other tanks. But look at this. We've held this, and we're letting the rest of our team kind of fold around us. Uh, and then we're going to drop back a little bit here to another hull down position. And rather than fleeing, this is what we talked about earlier. Sometimes the best spot you can be in is right in front of the bad guys. If I'm further away, they can get the gun down to me. 
If I'm close, they've got to come all the way over the top of the hill to get that shot. It's like they're going to pay for the privilege of this shot. No, we've got good guy IS7 who's just turned up and is doing a world of thunder. Uh, this E50M is like, uh, we were just rolling down this flank a second ago. It looked like we were having a breeze and it was all good ways and fun times and beer and Skittles. And no, buddy, it's a bad day for you in paradise. This is the value of quick reads. I'm not talking about I like that spot on the right, so I know if I go there and the enemy goes where I expect them to go, everything's going to be good. No, I'm talking about actually analyzing the game as it breaks down. You saw me looking around behind me. I was making sure that there was no one with shots on my ass because I'm an American tank and I have a 50 millimeter buttock uh, that is very easily penetrated. Oh, hello, VK, you idiot. The bloke who kept bouncing me out at the... Uh, Start of the game. Did you realize there's no damage to be had over there and you've come all this way over here and decided that now's your time to be a good player? Wanker. <laughs> nah, I'm alright. Um, and this, this is a valuable commodity in your gameplay. If you can become better and better and better at picking up the trades that work. Let me explain this to you. Trades that work. If you want to be a really good player in World of Tanks Blitz... And I mean, I'm good, but I'm not like Unicum kind of stuff. I'm just like a guy who does his best with experience and map awareness, right? If you want to be good at this game, the most important thing you can do is trade well. Now, by trading, we mean swapping your hit points for their hit points. So that's not even it. The basis of it is swapping shots, right? Do you want to give shots without receiving any return in return. But you also may be in situations where you want to give shots and you're confident you can bounce the shots. So I look at this mini-map, right? And I look at the teams and I'm thinking, they've got a Sense 7 and 1 and a, and a light tank. And I'm in an E50M. I This is terrible matchmaking for them. I can be a 60 kilometer an hour heavy tank here and absolutely obliterate these guys. The 7 and 1, this is a nightmare scenario for the 7 and 1. If he's running the Hesh gun, he's got a max of about 250 millimeters of pen uh, and I can side scrape off this and I've got an incredibly good gun. So this is about recognizing the strengths of my tank and seeing that I can have a field day here. Absolute field day. Accurate gun, good armor, uh, Role playing a heavy tank. Oh, we've finally taken some damage. We've only put 1,500 out. That's trading 1,500 damage from their red team for 300 damage for our guys. That's what we call making good trades. And you won't always be able to do it without taking damage, but this is what you aspire to. Making trades. Putting the bad guys in situations where you force them... Like, they're coming out sideways into a crossfire because they're so pissed off at the amount of smack they're getting from uh, me on this flank. And that Vickers was just desperate for it. And suddenly, the flank's clear. clear. We've done 2,600 damage and taken, I don't know, 500, 600 in return. These are things that will get you better at World of Tanks Blitz. But that is the thing that will make you good at World of Tanks Blitz. Making trades that are positive. The only time you might ignore that is if you are looking at a kill shot. You might like be happy to take a 400 alpha damage shot to give 15 damage if it clears a gun because a gun is worth clearing. Then finally, there's map knowledge. They got the hill. That's great. But you know what really screws you if you're on the hill? If you've got a heavy tank that's got really strong turret armor and strong upper glacis and just sits here behind this rock. This is like the hard counter for people who are on top of the hill who want to put shots in. They they absolutely hate this because it takes coordinated teamwork from them to clear a target who is here with this kind of armor profile and this kind of DPM. And this is unfortunate, but this is the case. Like this is map awareness, map knowledge. You take all those other skills, which are game mechanic skills, and then you put them in with knowledge of the maps. And I, I am all across this because right now I'm playing PC. And on PC, I have zero map knowledge. I'm slowly gaining that. And the thing that I'm finding is I'm perfectly fine with the game mechanics. Side scraping, 
hull down, making trades, staying close to buildings so I don't get killed by artillery, all that kind of stuff. But I don't know the positions. So I'll learn a position by basically going there and then getting hit from the side and going, oh, I understand now that's a position that doesn't work. Blitz is exactly the same. You can't beat map knowledge. I highly recommend new players. If you've got a, got a mate, go into a, a training room and just drive the maps. When you first start, if you drive the maps, um, you will you will save yourself so much pain and heartache. And you will find positions like this that other players use in games. I got this from when I took the hill in like a Vickers. And there was a grub here who just sat in this spot. And what happened is exactly what's happening here. My team's heavies ignored him because they couldn't do any damage to him and he wasn't coming out. So they basically ignored everything but this guy and he was just poking out when he wanted when he had shots. He never came out when he never shot. And this is great trades. We're on 1,700 damage. We've cleared the light tank off the hill. Uh, 1,800 damage. We've bounced 1,000 damage. Their leopard won't come over here even though they took the hill because he just is going to get pounded and suddenly... We had two bad guys on the hill and two heavies here, and they've done nothing. They have been absolutely incapable of doing anything. You can peek a boom from here on anyone that pokes the hill, and this is map knowledge put in with game mechanics, and suddenly you're like, uh, you know what? I just saw the leopard come down. Time to go and have some fun. And now there's a heavy tank on top of the hill. <laughs> and uh, they've been flanked and spanked, and they're just in a... Glass cage of emotion, as my good mate Ron Burgundy would say. I'm Bushka. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, please remember to like the videos and subscribe. I'm having a great time at the moment on the tube. I hope you can join me as we do more streams and more giggles and more fun. And yeah, just be nice to each other. It's a tough time out there in the world at the moment, guys. Uh, we don't need to make it any sillier. Uh, be nice to each other. Eat your veggies. Be nice to your mum uh, and your dad too. Uh, look after your dog. And uh, stay safe on the battlefield. Bye for now, you dirty Muppets.